Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique host. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely official Miss Jamaica. What's going on, baby? Nothing, nothing, my dad. Well, going Man, on. I don't even know. I just know that I came up here and I came today and I knew I was going to be blessed because I knew I had somebody coming that knew about God. So, you know, these are the easy interviews, man. Miss Anita Jawa. She's in the building, man. Holla at you. Hey, what's man. going on? Hey, man. I'm good. How are oh, you? Oh, didn't I tell you? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming today. I'm here. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. So how you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing um, good considering all things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You here. Amen. So, Amen. So you have to carry the baton. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. So, you know, are you from Dallas? I am not from Dallas. I am. Uh, I was born in Dallas, but I was actually raised in East Texas. Get out of here. So I'm a country girl. Get out of what here. What part of East Texas? I am right off of, it's, it's behind Suffer Springs, Mount Pleasant, Pittsburgh, so right off of I-30. Mount Vernon or something? Mount Vernon and some. uh-huh. <laughs> Where you at over there? I mean, Williamsburg is like 10 yeah, minutes yeah, from yeah. Mount Vernon. Yeah. And he, yeah, how'd you end up in Dallas? Because once I graduated high school, I went to Commerce. I went to uh, Commerce on a basketball what? scholarship. What? Oh, see, Boy, a I lot of so basketball, sick of these girls of coming in here. Check it, man. Check it, man. Yes. <laughs> You know what? I get tired of this. You know, these people coming in here ain't got no game. Fake pumping. What? Yeah, I don't even know. That. I was in basketball. Really? Really? She and said everybody she was in got scholarships and what, for and what, it. Yeah, but what happened everybody with me? I, you came up against me with that scholarship and over in Houston, Texas. You I know never what? Get it. You know what? Yeah, and I shut All that, of that down. That was because yeah, you know yeah. men have this big ego. Yeah, yeah. That you have to sort Just of like saying, you, know, you know. I agree. With you. Yeah, whatever. I agree. You know what I'm saying? I agree. So we have to let y'all women yes. lie. We give you permission women to women lie. Exactly. Men lie. Numbers don't. <laughs> Jay Z said that. Men lie. Women lie. Numbers don't. So we know what happened. Uh uh-uh. uh. We get know you, that she gave you the. You green. know what? Get the calculators. Yes. Uh-uh. yes. So so you played basketball. What, I played what basketball. Position? I played three and four. So as you short thought as you, I could, am. you thought you could do something? I I could do something. Obviously, I got a, a scholarship. You know that don't mean nothing. Look, that look don't mean that. nothing. You probably knew somebody. <laughs> Your family probably knew somebody. I'm not. I, listen, man, Anita, I'm not for the play with you in here. And I'm not. I didn't come to play. I didn't. You know, I showed up today <laughs> at Boss One on One. I didn't come to play. <laughs> this Boss Talk One on One. You said Boss One on One. Get out of here. You better not forget to talk because you're doing a lot of it today. I I came to talk already, <laughs> man. You know that we we started this almost six months ago. And it's been a blessing, the people that we've had on this platform, you know, uh, people that we've seen people laugh in that seat. We've pe- seen people cry, cry. in that seat. Mm-hmm. We have seen a lot of different things because we tackle a lot of different subjects. You know what I mean? And right. so, you know, when she told me you was coming on, I, I knew what you've been through. I seen you, you know, and I know I can words can't explain <coughs> what you had to experience. But God has a way of. He has his own way of doing things, right? Mm-hmm. It's his plan, right? Gotcha. So, you know, we have to be able to deal with things in a way to where we're able to understand them from his point of view. Correct. So, you know, I, I know it's been tough. And sometimes you can't I know understand it's been tough. him from his point Amen. of view. Yes, it has. Yeah. Sometimes but, you but, can't understand him from his point of view. Sometimes you just have to know that his purpose is greater than anything else. So you just have to go with the flow and trust him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, when how did you how did you end up uh, in Dallas again? You left Commerce, and then what happened? I graduated uh, college in Commerce. You did. I did graduate. Okay, praise God. Oh, praise uh-huh. God. <laughs> no, but you want to go back before that. You she wanna, liked to get I all like the way back, back in your childhood you were, when you were swinging on the swing in the elementary yes. school. I could care less, you know, I because like, I knew I already like that wasn't going to be nothing interesting to me. <gasps> You in the woods, you okay? Don't know. What else could you be doing? You, you down in them sticks. Know. What did Yesterday, your dad do for hold a on, hold on, hold on. What? What did hold your dad do? On. He was a mechanic. That's not that exciting. He, yes, it was. Yes, okay, it was. what's and exciting he, about a mechanic? Because he could fix on everybody's cars. No, everybody he, came for no, a conversation. Yeah, but did he really? Did he really? Was that he alternator was the, really bad? Yes, it was really bad. Was that bad. starter really dead? It was really bad. We don't know. It was really bad. I don't know about these mechanics. He can man. listen to your car and tell you what was wrong oh, with him. Did he teach yeah. you how to do all the things he could do? He taught me how to change a tire. Okay. Mm-hmm. He taught me how to check my oil. And he taught me just how to just the upkeep on the, on the car. Wow. So when I was pregnant with our first daughter, Omni, 
uh, I believe I was like six or seven months pregnant, my sister and I had a flat. Wow. And I changed that flat tire. Mm. So Six months pregnant. Six months pregnant. That's dope. Changed the flat tire. You ain't changed no tire. So. <laughs> I can. No, you didn't. But I have you. Yeah, whatever. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, you know. But um, so, and I didn't have to change the tire because I, I had a husband. Mm-hmm. We had AAA, but it was just some. It was just something. something about an East Texas person to make you want to change tires. That's what it is. I' gonna be honest with you. We different. We built different, I, baby. Ain't that what you say? Built. Yeah. yeah, that's right. We built different. We are. So East Texas in the building. Yeah, now I feel like we can do a real interview. We got real people in the building. I'm from East Texas too. Shout out to the people from East Texas. Shout out. The boy right here. He's been having a lot of. Oh, I bring everybody on, on there. I talked to. Lot. I talked to Freeway Ricky Ross and him today, and he's from Tyler, Texas. I didn't even know what? it, but he lives in L.A. Yeah. I said, man, you got to come on Boss Talk, man. Yes. <laughs> he represents East Texas yeah. to the fullest. Yeah, I do. Wow. I didn't so, know that. So, man, okay. we here now. Now we cool. You know, at first now I, we was, cool. I wasn't trying to hear it, but now. So now I get the green light. Oh, whatever you want to say, go. Okay. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> okay. okay. So, <laughs> so was your mom in your life as well? Oh, yes. My mom actually raised me. My okay. dad and my mom separated when I was two years old. So my mom raised me. Wow. But your dad was still a part of your yes. life. He was very much a part of my life. Okay. Yes. Siblings? I, it's uh, nine of us. Ooh, we Six boys and three girls. For your mom or did both? So okay. My mom birthed five and the rest okay. was from my dad. Wow. A oh, huge yeah. family. And where do family. you fall in, in between? I am the fourth from the last child. Wow. Okay. So wow. I got a, a sister above me or I had a sister above me and a sister below me. Mm-hmm. And um, I got two brothers below me and the rest of my brothers are above me. Mm. Wow. So, yeah. so do you, do you, well, you got a lot of stories. You just told me you, you're a middle child, pretty much. Yes. <laughs> so you have a lot of stories. As a child, what did you want to be growing up? I don't really, I can't remember exactly what I want to be. I just know that I w- didn't want to be what I saw around me. And what I mean by that, I didn't want to uh, be less than. I didn't want to be talked about. I didn't want to be mistreated. Um, and I that didn't was wanna, your environment. Yes, I didn't want to feel um, threatened or violated because um, uh, I saw that a lot. Um, and it's crazy because I can remember when I was four all the way up, like some things in my life. And I never forget that we stayed across the street from a cafe because, you know, we was in East Texas. You Already know? got a cafe <laughs> over there. Could you go in it? Because some of them down yes. there we couldn't go in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we, I wasn't supposed to be in the cafe because oh, okay. I was a child. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, there was some down there so bad you couldn't go in them. Right. We had one called the Kill Their Cozy Kitchen with three Ks. Oh, yeah, it gets deep. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, this particular cafe at night, it lit up back then. Wow. It was lit up. And so my mom would go over there, of course, with her friends. And so I would sneak out the house. I would leave my older brothers and sisters sleep. Okay. Okay. And I was curious is to see what was going on. I love the old school music. Mm-hmm. I just love interacting. So I would sneak over and I would hide underneath the pool tables in different rooms. <laughs> so I'm telling you, I was a, a very curious a kid. juke joint baby. You know what I'm talking about? And you a never juke got caught? joint baby is in the house. You never got caught? Yes, I did. I did get caught and I got beat from there back to home. <laughs> I'm gonna say she But was I was a, there. That's a juke joint baby. Ain't nobody never heard of that, but you know, we seen it in, uh, yes. in Ray. You remember Ray? The mm-hmm. movie Ray, Ray used yes. to listen to that man play the piano. Yes. The juke joint, baby. Yes. <laughs> so I'm I'm hiding out. I'm listening to conversations. All kinds of things are going on. you like, whoa. I'm like, this is what adults do? Oh, my God. <laughs> How old were you then, four or five? I had to be about, I started off at four, but at that time when I was starting to get caught, it yeah. was about six or seven. Yeah, you were understanding stuff. So after bit. you yeah. got caught, did you stop doing it or did you keep doing it? I kept doing it, but I wouldn't go inside. I would just look at outside the window. <laughs> I'll get listening. close enough what? to where I wouldn't be on. I wouldn't get caught, but I could hear. Yeah. And it was certain conversations that, of course, you know, you're not supposed to hear. But it just intrigued me. Yeah, that people would be doing this. Yeah, and then I would see different people that was married. Yeah. During the day. Yeah. And yeah. at night they was and somebody single. else. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> single yeah, yeah, at night. yeah. It, it helped you to understand. It helped me to understand. And then I would see, I, even at that age, my mom never knew it, but I, I began to see drugs. I yeah, was yeah, seeing the yeah. exchange. I didn't know what they were at that time, but as I was getting older, I said, that's what the exchange was. That's what the, the money and the mm-hmm, exchange, I didn't mm-hmm. understand those things. Mm-hmm. And so still, I didn't, still didn't understand what God was doing. I kept saying, God, why am I seeing these things? Why is this so intriguing? Why is this mm-hmm. drawing me? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that that was birthing a ministry inside mm-hmm, of me. Mm-hmm. You know, being, seeing these types 
types of things and also being uh, one that will be able to listen without judging. Yeah. Because yeah. oftentimes we see and we judge. Mm -hmm, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so it was it was teaching me that people can bounce back that yeah. they won't always be this person and that we can talk them through. But as a kid, I'm going, why is this all, man, this is crazy. Yeah. Because it seems like I was the only one that was seeing it. Yeah, maybe because yeah. I, maybe I was the only child that was, was out there. You was, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you was. Everybody else was at home like they supposed to be. But no, no, you was by yourself. Yeah, you was listening. And look, how far was your house from there? Right across right the street. Right across the street, but you yeah. good? Yeah. Yeah, was it? It was dark. It was dark. She get out the house at night. Where was your mama at? She was there sometimes. Sometimes she, she was in the juke joint too, yeah, wasn't she? Or she would be in bed, and I'd figure out how to get out there. Yeah, but you had to see it. I, it was something in me to just. I don't know what it was. You know, when you're but, young like that, that that didn't mean to cut y'all. But when you're no, young no. like that, and you you do go into through things, and you see those situations, I always tell the story about me being in the juke joint with my daddy. Mm. Yeah, but but it, it, it wasn't it wasn't a juke joint. It was a it was a gambling shack, and he would be shooting dice, and I'd be like, "Dad, let's go," because I see him up on the dice, and he never would leave. When he'd be up on the dice, I'm like, "Let's go." I'm five six years old. Yeah, and I'm like, "Come on, let's go." Like, let's go. But he would never leave, and I remember that. But like I said, I always tell a story. He got shot in the head there, and uh, my other uncle got killed in that same place. So wow. you know, and then my other uncle burnt it down. <laughs> so you know, yeah, yeah, we. I, my, it's levels my, to this. Yeah, my dad had a nine, bro, nine, eight brothers and five sisters. Mm. It was nine boys and five girls. So I, I get it. You know, like when you're young like that and you see it, then you see your mama shoot at your daddy at about three, four years old, and boom, you know, you're young, but you're seeing all this, and it's like, wow, this is dope. You know, like this is great. <laughs> <laughs> Not <laughs> understanding. Like, it's like a movie. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. But at the end of the day, there is a ministry in your testimony and the things that you go through that's true so yeah that's and it's good now so you was able to use that later on you didn't know why then no i didn't but know god why then. opened your eyes later on let's go ahead with the story Correct. but during um the period of time when in the juke joint and all of that as you got older because when you're so curious looking at that sometimes when we become of age or we can go to the juke joint without our mom saying anything did you end up going to the juke joint to go hang out and be any of those people i sure did <laughs> Um, <laughs> you you frequent that afterwards. I get it. You was I destined to get through there I, and get on that pool table. <laughs> I know I can beat him. <laughs> exactly. I've been seeing him for years. Yeah, I watched him. I know every move he gonna make. When he gonna take a drink? I was watching. Yeah, and he be tricking a lot. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but at that time, fourteen, uh, that juke junk was not um, available. Mm -hmm. uh, so I did go to another one. Of course. Again, I had to sneak out because my mom wasn't playing no games with that. Yeah. And so. You were clubbing. Yeah, yeah. I was clubbing I at 14. It. At 14, I was too. That's how it was in the country. Did you hear what I said? Yes. You were too? Yes. At 14, yes. No, no, at 11. At 11? That was my first time. And I used to ask the girl um, at 11, and I didn't even realize it was crazy, but I, they were like 20, 19. Would you like to dance? Yeah, yeah. And they say no a lot of time, but I got a few yeses. I don't know how I looked out there. <laughs> But I know I got out there with mine. And and my uncle and me, they, they laughed at me at first, but in the end, I was a good dancer. <laughs> <laughs> but one, shout out to well. one. Yeah, I was at the Funk and Roll Club, but one down in the, uh, East Texas. Yeah, what? yeah, yeah. You ain't never heard of that? Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, yeah, you, you don't, yeah, you was a church girl. It's on 59? No, no, no. Yeah, it what was on 43. 43. Right there in Marshall, right coming out to our country. Remember, Rory was yeah. on here. The owner of the club was here. And really? I told him about how I was up and in that And that club has been, he, been there 43 years. Yeah, and yes. Millie Jackson was the first guest. Shout out to my boy Rory for making it happen. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so okay, that, okay. we was young, yeah, but we, yeah, we, got in, we got in there. We did get in there. And you used to have to swing your feet. So you didn't slow dance and not swing your feet. You always had to swing your feet. <laughs> 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 we had a great time growing up. You know, we, you know, those are the things that that history made me know how to understand how to communicate with people. And I didn't realize it at the time. No. But the same thing you saying, you know, I was learning how to listen and communicate and learning how to know what to dodge in the streets actually and it helped out it yeah. helped out when I, um, I of course I say this later but when I went on to college that that lifestyle Bam. 
got me prepared for college. That's right. So much of that lifestyle got me prepared for college because I wasn't one of those that as soon as you enter to college, your parents are no longer around, and then you get wild, you get loose, you do all kinds of things. I was so cool and collective. They was like, you going to a party? I'm like, I've been partying since I was 14. <laughs> so... Yeah, I can go, but I don't have to be at the exactly, party. Exactly, because we know what that party do. Yeah. We yeah. already was going. It was if I already was going, going at 11, and you, it didn't surprise me. So it wasn't a big deal. Well, what about drinking? I'm like, that I, I've been doing this, so yeah. I don't need it. Yeah, if I decide drinking. to get it, I get it, but yeah. I don't. It's yeah. not like I just go out every night because I'm getting drunk because my parents are no longer around. Right. Yeah. That wasn't the case. It prepared you already. It and did. I did, too, because I was nine. I thought I was grown at nine. I was out there, yeah, with my daddy working and yeah. acting like I was doing everything he was doing. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and then I go to the club, too, because I get paid. It's like they get paid. Do you know what I mean? It's something else. It was, it was different. So how many kids did you have when you and you and you, you was only married once? Or? I was only married once, praise God. Okay, so how, how many did years? How, did how, many, no, no, how many years first? We were married for 20 years. Wow. June 21st would have been 21 years. 21 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, um... Now let's go back to what you. How did y'all meet? How did y'all meet? We actually met when I was 16 years old, and it was it was strange because I wasn't supposed to be at my sister's wedding. Because remember, I told you my sister. My sister uh, passed away May 27th this year, wow. right after my husband did. Wow. wow. A few months after my husband, so her particular her wedding. Um, I was the maid of honor. Okay. But I wasn't going to be the maid of honor because we were in basketball. Because I was so good, we went to state. Mm. They went to state because she was so good. She Did you was good. Oh, yeah, like, it ain't nothing but one it. person no, out of five. It. I'm no, the one made it happen. No, I'm arrogant about it because I know if it hadn't been for me being on that team, no. they most likely wouldn't have made it to state. That's what she said, no, guys. No, no, I'm, I'm messing with you, okay? But, <laughs> no, but I wish but, I catch you out there with a basketball ever in your life. I'm going to call you. Yeah, sit yeah. You if I <laughs> ever catch you out there, I don't want you it's looking at me. because I'm me. holding it right now. <laughs> If you catch me right now, I'm <laughs> No, but so, so, go ahead. Okay, so uh, we ended up coming back from state because we played in the first uh, round and we, we got defeated, unfortunately. Wait a minute, see, now, see, yes. I don't like you. <laughs> see, I'm going to tell you why I don't like you. We got because you say we ended up coming back before we, you say we lost. Yeah. I don't like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You caught it, didn't you? She played yeah, yeah, it real yeah, good. We, yeah, we, we ended up coming back. <laughs> yeah, you came back. <laughs> yeah, them white girls probably put that, all that bam, bam on you. Awesome sister. It could have been either one of them. But you went up there. No, and you I, was, I was the only black girl on my team. Oh, well, that's why. Them other sisters, you, you <laughs> found four more sisters out there. <laughs> you found four more sisters out there. More you like, dang, I thought we was ready. That was not the case. Well, wait, who, who did y'all lose to, if you don't mind me asking? I, I, I don't even remember. Are you going to sit there and play me like that? Are you, <laughs> she's like, I'm not too you know what? I don't you even know. remember. No, she really, 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 listen, really I don't remember. Listen, I put man. that to the back of my brain. I see that. You know, <laughs> that day, in state. In state. You don't remember. I, I put it to you the know back. what, man. It, it was a long back. time ago. It was a long time girl, ago. Them girls whooped up on her. She had <laughs> dreams about it afterwards during that time. I did, <laughs> but <laughs> I don't remember the team. Okay, good. What color did they wear? <laughs> they were in white. I do remember See that. that. See, <laughs> you trying to investigate But hard. I do not know the name. That was white oak. No. <laughs> That's where Pat Mahomes finished playing at. I am not with you. <laughs> <laughs> so when y'all came home after y'all de got defeated. Yeah, that's the way yes. I see it. <laughs> no, we came home. After we came back, then yeah. we had lost. No, you got defeated, and they sent you home. Let's just tell it how it went. We got to let that go. You're We're like, not going to let that go. <laughs> Stephanie, I'm not letting it go, okay? Just so you know. So when you came back, back. after being... Just slaughtered down there. Nobody's <laughs> okay, let's get to the wedding. You taking it so far. Let's get to the wedding. <laughs> After I came back. <laughs> Go ahead and see it. It's okay. I'm not seeing it. <laughs> After I came back. After you came back, what happened? Your mom and them let you cry on their shoulder because it was Briefly, hurt. Yes, it sure I was. I know it hurt. It sure was. It hurt. Because you still ain't got wedding. over that whooping. That was a whooping, though. And then the wedding. Okay. <laughs> let's get to the wedding. So at this wedding, which was a beautiful wedding, was at um, this is so this is so crazy, but this is just like God. Okay. So we were my sister had her wedding at my husband's church. My husband and his his it was my is my husband's father. Oh, so my okay. father in law's church. Okay, that's where the wedding was. So uh, my husband's on one end and I'm on the other end. 
So we kind of passed each other. We waved, and it was like, okay. So afterwards, of course, at the reception, uh, he asked for a dance. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, okay, no. Uh, I and didn't give him a 16. dance. And, and how 16. old was he? He was 19. Okay, okay he liked you at that yeah. point. He said, yeah. I, I seen my... My angel, kind of like I did you. Yeah, go no, on, go no, on, bro. No, no, no. So, yeah, he didn't want to dance with you for nothing. He trying to get it started. Let's go. <laughs> so, anyways, that was um, the first time that I saw him. So, once I got in college, um, at that time, my husband was married at the time that I first met him. Oh. So, I didn't know at it. At 19. At 19, he got married early. Wow. And so, uh, so later on, when I was in college, he maybe about two years after. I think the marriage only it only lasted two years. So when I was in college, uh, we met again. Mm. Coincidental, which was not because my brother in law at that time set that up. Oh, okay. yeah, it's like one of those. I found out later that it was kind of a setup. And so from that point on, we were touching and base, touching, you know, staying in touch. Uh, so when I graduated from college, I came back. I came or I moved to Dallas, and so uh, I started going to my sister's church. So once I was in the church, my, my brother-in-law at the time said, uh, she saved for real this time. Hmm. So because my husband was an ordained minister. So he was doing a uh, back to school, back to Christ concert. And I just so happened to be the youth leader at my church. So of course I'm calling, you know, can we get some tickets and whatnot? He was like, okay, okay, I'll bring them to you. I said, well, you can just meet me at the gas station. He was like, I'm not a drug dealer. I'll just <laughs> pass out tickets at the gas station. I can come over. I'm like, well, I'm single. I don't do stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, but anyways, he came over, and when he came over, it's so funny, because I opened my door, and I had the, you remember those, uh, those, those change lock, locks? Uh-huh. So I had the change lock on the door. So this brother thought he was getting in, but the change lock stopped him. Yeah. Okay, hello. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What do you need? So I was looking at him, he was like, no, I really got the tickets, and I got something else for you. I, I said, I need to see everything that you have. I need to see it all. He was like, I stopped by and I got some, I got some, uh, some veggie burgers. I'm like, I'm not a vegetarian. I eat meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he was like, please, I do. I'm just trying to just introduce you to something else. And just so happened on that particular day, I was fasting. Wow. So you know, in my mind, I'm like, he the devil. Yeah, he is the yeah, devil. Yeah, I already, yeah, 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 yeah. I already gave yeah, up. Yeah, I'm like, he the yeah, devil. Yeah. But, but anyways, from that point, he came in and we began to date. Mm. And uh, not even a year later, nine months later, we wed. Amen. And we stayed together up until his transition. Amen. You know, I heard a lot about uh, Bishop Omar. I never knew him to the day that uh, Corey sat here, and he had sent me his picture to, before that because he like, he after we talked on the phone, you got to meet all these people, like, because he we our spirits connected, you know. Right. He, he it was because I get to talking about God and stuff, like get a little excited and. Talk you about talk my, about God? Yeah, a little okay. bit, just a little bit. Okay. And my testimony, you know, started talking about it. And yeah, and he was like, you got to be Bishop. We got, he, he and he, he just telling me about everybody. What's the other guy named? The one that was there the other day? Anton. Anton, mm-hmm. yeah. All of them. OGU, you got to get in here. We need, you know. I said, well, that's all right. Let me think about this here. You know how I am. I'm real particular about people. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing, but I'm going to try to figure out, God, is this what I need? I don't do groups well, God. You know I get kicked out. I'm like Paul. I get kicked out. I don't play with them. If you ain't making a change, I'm going to show you how to change it. Right. You know? right. <laughs> Am I like that? Mm-hmm. I will get kicked out because I don't. I want to see change happening. We can change this if we do it. Right. Not if we just talk about it and preach to each other. Right. I don't mm. like that. He don't like that. I'm, I'm like very that. serious about mm-hmm. action. Yeah, I'm about that action. You heard him say it. You know? <laughs> I'm about that action. So I mean, yes. like we got to do something, and and so that's my most thing, the thing that I deal with a lot. And um, he said, "No, nah, man, you just check it out, man." And and you know, I'm gonna come on the show, and, and yeah, I say, "Man, we'd be happy to have you," you know. And uh, that's how I met. But but he definitely was uh, about Bishop Omar. That was his thing, man. Mm-hmm. That was his fearless leader is where it came off to me. Yes. This guy leads us and we go out and do things. And I met him, I was at a nightclub and I met this other guy and I heard the whole story. Yes. And I was like, you know what, man, that, that sounds like something, somebody trying to get people into situations where they can help the community is what you think. But there's a lot of different organizations that seem to be something that they're not. So I'm still just leery about everything. You know what I mean? Right. Cause I don't right. want to waste time because I don't have, a lot of time we and don't have should. we don't know 
But you know what I'm saying? We, we don't, really know. don't know. And we act as if we can take life for granted, but we can't. No. Mm -mm. So Cannot. we have to do things in a strategic way that, to where we respect God. Right. And, and, and what he would have for us to do. So that's, that's how I look at things. So, but, but definitely, man, I heard a lot of great things about him. I seen him, he was on a billboard, I believe. Yes, on 45, yeah. on 145. Yeah, yeah, yes. I seen that too. So, you know, it's things like that that stick out to me because at the end of the day, man, it had to be something good about Bishop Omar for people to be so, even touching skin, all them that girls down there, they was on there too. Him. Different people have come on this platform and, and have really lifted up the, the fact. And then the day when we was on that show uh, mm -hmm. with Corey, we seen him, you know, speak. So. That had to be tough, you know. I think about Coretta Scott King when she had to deal with Martin Luther King after he passed away. Mm -hmm. And I just look at the way that the monuments continued to go up. Correct. And, and she had to deal with this every day, this reality that her husband began to blossom. As I believe a prophet does or one does that's really called to God that's willing to give up his life for the sheep. Right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's a different level of leadership when you're willing to lay down your life for the sheep. And I believe my husband did that. You I see know what I just he said? did that. Well, I can go there. That's why I got to pull up. I better pull yes. up because I get happy. <laughs> but it's real, you know, it is. because there's so many people in leadership that just do, they, they're hirelings. Come on, they're now. not willing to lay their life down. You know, they just hireling. When the wolf comes and it says they'll flee. That's so we it. have to we have to understand who we are in leadership and why we get in the places we get in so that we'll be able to be good at what we do. So we need to be really, really aware of what our calling is. That's true. So That's I don't true. play with it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Okay. So, so yeah, yeah, I get kicked out. That's what I'm telling you. Yeah. And the people that I deal with most of the time are people that people wouldn't know. They say, you know, he was on your show. Are you going to let him come? Did you tell him what to say? Did you? I don't do none of that because Jesus meet people where they at. He right. never, where ever, they were. yeah, yeah, wherever they was at, he mm -hmm. met them there, you know. If you was bleeding and a woman and you wasn't supposed to touch him, he let you touch him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you was blind and everybody else said, be quiet, blind Bartimaeus, he would still say, hey, yeah, yeah let him come on come up. On. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Or any time that there was interaction going on or, or the woman, you know, that, that basically dropped a water pot, you know, he would, yeah. he would make time to be with people you wouldn't expect. Right. So I feel like the platform that I'm on, I don't put no stipulations on it because I feel like I'm the light that'll lead them out of darkness. Right. So I don't play with it. You know what I'm saying? Because I know my ministry Mr. is yeah. to help people. And how can you help somebody mm -hmm. if you steadily putting up all these blocks and I can't do and I won't do and I ain't there? I right. don't get down like that. I so like you could have came in here cussing and fussing with your little uh, mini skirt on like you used to do up there at that juke joint. I still would have <laughs> let you sit down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Well, look at God. <laughs> but now I know you had to be, you know, that had to be a deal where, to me, you know, for you to have to endure it. Like, like I say, like a Coretta or, you know, had to, it, it has to be tough when you're dealing with somebody that has that much influence like that. That's yes. why I spoke on it like I did, because I know that that influence pretty much is something that you still have to deal with every day because people are going to say, well, they bring, you, they it up bring him up. They, they, the billboard's going up and the people are talking. And when they right. see you, they used to seeing him. So yes. that, that's just it. And God has prepared you. God has it. prepared you. And, and to be with someone who all that time was leading and dealing with people, he had to, you had to be aware. Yeah. Like I pray with my wife and I know it's going to come a time when one of us going to have to get out of here. You know what I'm saying? But right. what did I do when I had the opportunity? That's, that's what it. really mattered. You know what I mean? That's it. So that's 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 golden. Very so much so. So you got that still, you know. So you but you're a beautiful lady. Thank you. You better be glad I ain't single. <laughs> man, <laughs> listen, man, we go back to that juke joint. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no, but we so, have been delivered. <laughs> <with a team. laughs> that's right. So so and how, how is, do you deal I'm, with yeah. um him being gone yeah. because there's so many people who are watching who maybe going lost, through the same experience have lost a loved one or is a losing husband. a loved one mm -hmm. a husband um, a child and can't deal with it I That's would say question. that um, my faith has been activated now more than ever mm -hmm. and as you said earlier uh, E is that God prepared us so even before he transitioned God was preparing both of us and, and I thank God for that, that he just didn't leave us uh, unknowingly. Uh, we didn't know the exact time. We didn't know the exact date. Uh, don't get me wrong with that. Uh, but 
along the way God was showing us. Mm -hmm. And God was, um, even because we do a, 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 a daily prayer at 6 a.m., a corporate daily prayer. And uh, God was showing us even with that, like when the pandemic first hit, he said that it was going to be hard, but that he was going to that he was going to give us the grace to get through it. And I didn't quite understand it. You know, when he gave it to me one uh, early one morning, I'm like, I don't understand this, God. But he said the more and more he kept talking to me, he said, I need for you to come closer to me. I need for you to find out more time. And, and this is going to be an unusual uh, time, not only for you, but for the world. And, um, and so God just kept showing us and just kept talking to both of us. And, and, and during that time, Bishop said, okay, I'm going to start doing Heal America even the more. I'm going to go every month somewhere else. And I was like, no, you can do it at home. You can do it in the studio. He said, I can't. I can't. He kept saying, I, I, I can't. I'm going to run out of time. I just, I can't. And I didn't understand what he was talking about the time. I thought he meant, hey, I'm going to run out of time, momentum. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to get too old for it. I didn't understand that he was talking about God's timing for his life. Yeah. And I don't even know if he understood Correct. all of that. Uh, but he kept saying, I got to go. I got to go. And every city we went, as a matter of fact, um, the, the Hill America that was in Dallas was last year on June 24th, 2020. That's our wedding date. Wow. Wow. And so when he said, he said, I got to do it and I got to do it this date. I said, we're not going to celebrate. He said, we're going to celebrate afterwards. That's but right. we're going to do the Hill America. That's right. That's right. We're going to do the Hill America. And I was like, okay, well, you want to do it? And I was like, and God said, shut up. Listen, just shut up. And so it was during those times where, where I wanted to say something. I wanted, I wanted the Anita to come out. And God said, no, because I got him. I got him. And God kept saying, I got him. And I didn't know what that meant. But he was just going from city to city to city. And so uh, October came up. And I never will forget, October came up. And this is when we both contracted COVID. Mm -hmm. And um, October 12th was the first day that he ended up from an, uh, from an urgent care to an emergency room. And that was the last day. That was the first and the last. He ended up in the hospital and did not come out of the hospital till March 11th when he transitioned. Wow. But uh, the October 12th was when he flew out of town. He was in another city in a whole nother state. Mm. Mm. And so we were apart two weeks. Uh, he's, he's, <clears throat> he's fighting for his life and he didn't realize how much I was fighting for my life. Mm. Uh, because of course I didn't want to call him because he, I felt like he was in a worse condition. And he had, uh, um, different, you know, things that were already going on in his body. Mm -hmm. um, and so I stayed at home and I stayed away from my children, uh, which our baby girl did get it, but she didn't have any, any symptoms. And so we walked through that, got through that. And so um, I wasn't even cleared by the doctor before I boarded the plane. The doctor said, wow. do not get on the plane because we don't know. And, um, and I said, well, I got to go see about my husband. And so the moment that I got there, one thing led to the other, and I was able to go in. Um, they had cleared him because he, he was already in the medical-induced state at that time. Mm -hmm. And so I was the first person to see him, to lay hands on him, to touch him, to kiss him, and all of that. And then we stayed there from that time all the way up to December 23rd. Wow. We finally got the green light for him to travel back to Dallas, which was Care Flight, which was really... Uh, we prayed through that. We had prayer warriors all around the country praying because that wasn't... Uh, the doctors wanted to do it, but they didn't want to do it because his condition wasn't all the way better. But it wasn't worse, but mm -hmm. it wasn't all the way. And the air could have did anything to his lungs. It was a lot of things going on. But we managed to do that. We came back. My daughters wanted to be back here for Christmas. Because mind you, every, when I moved, they moved. So they're in school, but they're doing virtual online. One is in high school, one is in college. So everybody world shifted. No one was doing the same thing. His parents was there. His sisters, um, our, our, our older son was there. I love uh, the support. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of support <clears throat> there. And so we're staying in the hotel. We're not staying in the house. We're not staying with people. We're all in a hotel room. I know. And so we're eating hotel food. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to Walmart to buy some clothes mm -hmm. or we're trying to find a mall to get some more clothes because we're thinking week by week, we don't know mm -hmm. if we're going to come back home mm -hmm. or something else is going to happen. But we're yet holding on to our faith. And, um, and so people from around the country, like I said, were calling, taking up fast, uh, doing all kinds of things. And um, so December 23rd, we landed here back in Dallas. Um, and so we were here up until March 11th. And we had so much favor at the particular hospital. Um, they were not letting everyone in, but they not only let, allowed us in, they allowed us to have access to my husband 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Wow. So awesome. that meant that I could spend the night with my husband. Wow. He could sleep in his bed and I could sleep on the cot or whatever. I had stayed so long to where I went out and I asked my assistant to buy me a cot 
So I brought the cot in and I could stay there at night with him just to make sure he was good. That's what you um, and then the food, he wasn't able to digest, he wasn't able to uh, take. So went out and purchased the food, brought it back in, and I made his food every single day. Wow. Um, made sure that he was bathed. I didn't ask the assistants to bathe him. I bathed him. Um, I didn't. It was a lot of things that the nurses and the staff were doing and could have done, but I just did it. Right. And I didn't want to wait. Sometimes I press the button, and you know how they get, because mm -hmm. they got a lot of other patients and yeah. a lot of things and are going at on. This time, it's a lot of people. It's a lot. Of, it's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I would just normally do it, and um, and when I would take my breaks, it'd be so funny that he would have somebody call me and say, "Call my wife." You know, he couldn't really talk, but that's what he would get out. And they were, and I'm like, I'm coming back. I'm just taking a break. I got to shower. I got to do this. But it was he just. He wanted you by his side 24-7. Yes, he, he, felt, he felt that protection. And, um, and he felt that connection as well. Right. And, I, and I thank God for that. Um, and so he did go on. But the day before he went on, we were on our prayer call. And uh, God gave me this as if he was standing right before me. And, and it's the scripture says that um, what can separate you? What can separate you from me? And um, is it death? Is it life? Is it this? Is Romans it, you know, chapter 8. Yes. So he gives me that. And I'm, and I'm thinking it's for somebody else. I didn't know less than 24 hours it was actually for me. Yeah, yeah. And so with that being said, of course I was devastated. Of course my heart was broken. Of course I felt like I couldn't breathe. I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't move because my heart was ripped out of me. Mm -hmm. My very soulmate, the one that I promised to be with for the rest of my life. And I would always tell him, I love you beyond my last breath. Wow. And um, this is not just a temporary love, but this is a forever love that I have for you. And uh, he would say the same thing. I, I love you, Anita. He called me Faye, Anita Faye. That's my nickname. Mm -hmm. And so it was so... Um, it was so overwhelming to be in this seat. And before he even, before we um, had children, uh, we were having a talk one night and I said, um, I, I'm looking forward to us having children, but I'm not looking forward to raising children by myself. Oh. And he said, where did that come from? I said, because my dad died when I was 19 years old. Mm. And, um, and you work just, you remind me so much of my dad. You take care of everybody. You work hard. You make sure everybody is okay. You're not judgmental. You're loving. You're kind. You show up. You go to court for people you don't even know. You know, you give. You come back out of, off of, off of uh, speaking engagements and you stay up all night. You go fix somebody's tire. You, you know, all of these kinds of things. Or he'll go pay somebody to go fix a tire. But <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't in, in, the, in that kind of business. But uh, he just kept going and he would work untirelessly. He would be up all kinds of so I was asking him this and he was like, no, 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 I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here. Well, just so happened to be, we have a 19 year old that's getting ready to turn 20. He passed at the same age that my dad passed with the same months. Wow. Mm -hmm. So my 19 year old actually experienced the very same thing that I experienced yeah. as a 19 year old wow. yeah. in college because I was in college. <clears throat> and, um, and after my dad's funeral, I went back to college and I did the the thing that I didn't say at the beginning, but I did the, I made the worst decision that I, I could have at that time. I gave up my love of basketball. Wow. The full scholarship, I gave it back to the college. I said, I can't play because my dad's not here. I, I have no reason of leaving. Wow. And so because I did that at 19, now that I'm in my 40s and my husband has gone on to be with the Lord, I knew better to do that. I knew better to backtrack. I knew better than go back because I already been there, done that. I knew what that was. I knew that crazy world. I knew that world that God brought me out of because I was this close to having a sentence and going into uh, the uh, prison system, basically. Mm -hmm. If somebody just would have said, yes, she did it, then I would have been gone because yeah. I did do it. Yeah. You know, and, um, uh, but with my husband, God was preparing and during that time after he transitioned, um, I was totally broken. I was yeah. totally devastated. Um, but what kept me was my faith. What kept me was uh, the people that, that scripture that says, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. much. That scripture, I knew people were praying for me. Mm -hmm. When I couldn't audibly pray for myself, I'm a prayer warrior. Yeah. I couldn't audibly pray for myself. Mm. Uh, when I felt like I was drowning in my own tears, when I felt like I wasn't able to be or sufficient enough to even be a parent at that time because I was crying and I was waddling and um, my soulmate, the one that you think that you're gonna grow old, you're gonna be 70, 80 years old with, and both of us are in our forties. And here it is, this man is gone. Wow. 
Yeah. Not just sick like he was in the hospital, but gone. Yeah. Uh, physically. Now, spiritually, yeah. I know he's still here. Right. Mm-hmm. But uh, the physical part of him is gone. And so it was, it was so much uh, of me walking with God and getting back up. But what kept me the most uh, was that I didn't have one counselor. I, I got two because I knew I needed some people to walk me through. There were some questions that I knew I had it, that I had that I had to get answers to. And it wasn't just putting on a facade. It just wasn't uh, uh, just pray about it. It wasn't just one of those things, because we could say pray about it for anything. But after you pray, then what? Yeah, yeah. You said the fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. That's what you was saying. You know, yes. And you know people were praying for you. And I like what you said about Romans chapter 8, how who can separate us from the love of God? No depth, no height, no principality, no things in the past, nothing to come, you know, right. nothing can separate you, nothing. you know, and <clears throat> this is, this is something that we have to hold on to, you know, that is, that, that, that's the most important thing, but you know, you know, this is, this is where, you know, when we really look at things and what God has laid out before us, you know, like I said, I value the times that, that I have with a person, you know, so much because right. we don't know, you know, sometimes I go the extra mile and doing extra things because People do pass on. You know what I mean. Right. It don't matter who you are. You know what I mean. When it's that's time, true. it's time. You and and all you can do is love. love. That's it. Love. That's all you can do is love. You know. Love. That's the most important thing. Is but love. I use I use death as um, if you're still here. You use it as an example of what you need to be doing in your life. Meaning, when I lost my dad, I can hold on to memories of us going hunting, fishing, I'm doing certain things. And this life makes you, or America, or you would say, uh, makes you want to work all the time to create a future for your kids. Mm-hmm. Money, money, money. You know what I mean? And not really spend as much time with them. Oh, you want to do basketball? Okay, I'll get somebody to take you over here. I'll drop you here, but I'm going to go here because i got to still go to work. i got to do two jobs. i got to do this to, to provide a good future for you but at the end of the day when you go you leave all this money but they can spend off leave it you don't leave all that values with them you don't leave all the memories and I, and I tell everybody I said as much as yes your memories can go because of Alzheimer's God is still not a wicked guy where all people who have Alzheimer's still remember when they were young mm-hmm. so all their memories are gone they still remember those foundation years you know what I mean? So if you can spend that time and really, like I tell our kids all the time, I said, tomorrow's not promised. You can go, I can go. I'm not only helping them, but I'm helping myself because death has no age. So by talking about this to the ones you love, you're preparing yourself that if they might go, and no matter how much you prepare yourself, you still can never prepare yourself for that time, but it does help speaking about it and telling people what... Um, what your your wishes are like if i go tomorrow i would like for you to you know move on with your life don't sulk move on you know because life is here there's a reason you're still here and i'm not so remember all the times that we've had together and use that to move on raise the kids you know things like that don't forget those times but you have to move on because whoever we would never want a person to sit down and not, because if you had went before him, you wouldn't want him to sit down and not. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So people need to always still look at things like that. If it had went the other way around, what would you want for that person? I don't want him to grieve, keep grieving for about five, <laughs> ten years. <I'm> <laughs> no, I, I definitely, yeah. I definitely get where you're going. You know, yeah. but if something happened to me, I want you to, I want you to just uh, make sure uh, be respectful. You know what I'm saying about how you what? move on. Just be respectful. Don't just move on because I need you to think about it for a minute. <laughs> no, but I definitely know that th- this is it, real life. And it's story. real life. As a yeah, matter of like, fact, my, my husband life. said this. He said it openly at the pulpit and with us talking. He said, if I go before you, this is how I want you to do. I want you to fall out at the funeral. <laughs> I want you to cry. I want my whole family to cry that whole day. Do not have a quick and short funeral. funeral. Remember me. I am somebody. Body, yeah, yeah. And um, that's what he said. Then he said, and when you decide to move on, just know I'm coming back. <laughs> I'm going to haunt you. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's Did really, you fall out? 
No, I didn't fall out. No, no. I didn't. I, I almost, but I didn't. <laughs> no, it's it's something when you know that that person is a part of you. The Bible mm -hmm. tells you that you because the two become one. You become one, and it's true. You know, it's like you lost a kidney or something. You know, it's 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 tough. And but you know, God is a good God. He is, and God is bigger than our how look anything we could think, our issues, anything we could fathom. He's God. He's omnipotent. That's right. So he's you really can't even get on his level to even know what what what's going on with him in that way, just in ways that he opened up and let you see. Right. 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 So you mm -hmm. have to really you have to really stay prayed up, man. You know, you have to really continue to keep that connection with God through the Holy Spirit and through his word, <clears throat> through his word. word. Yeah. Right. If you don't, then you end up losing power. I always say that you lose power when you don't keep that connection. Oh, you know that. That's right. That's so right. so how do you so how the ministry? I have to get into that. Like, how do you how did you guys further the ministry after Bishop's gone? What happens? Is is, is is a church that was was involved with this? Yes. Yes. And okay. so okay, and many churches. If he's yes. a bishop, he's uh, a bishop. Uh, you know, I read a little bit and I know yes. I, I know tradition. <laughs> I'm not a traditionalist. I'm gonna tell you that now. But I know tradition. You, you know, know tradition. what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I very much talk against a lot of things. I'm gonna be real. That's what you're dealing with here. Okay. But I know how it transitions, how the people circulate and how the bishop is supposed to be blameless. Yes. Yeah, the husband of one wife. Amen. Yeah, oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> What it says. So, what happened with this? You know, with the with the church, and how did how did it? What how did it make? How did things turn out? Okay, it was actually <clears throat> one of the hardest things for us to do as a church. Uh, we had to grieve while we were healing. Okay, and that was so uh, that was so heavy on the church. You had to grieve uh, while you was healing. Yes, I'm with you. And some of the members actually, um, some have come back and some have not come yeah, back. Yeah, I get mm. it. Uh, uh, because it's hard. It's very hard. And because there is a new uh, a new pastor there, which I'm the pastor now. Okay. And so, and I just think that's hard. You very know, it's hard. it's hard on them because that's the voice that you're used to hearing. That's yeah. the person that you're mm -hmm. used to hearing, and not to see or hear that person, it's it's devastating. It's, tough. it's devastating. And then as far as our Kingdom Covenant of Churches, uh, they waited 90 days and they had to select a new, new bishop. bishop. Mm -hmm. And so the bishop is now sitting in the seat. Okay. And so that part of it is going on. And the local part, I'm the pastor of, of over K-War here in Dallas. Okay. And so uh, God has built that platform for us. Uh, we dare not give up, give in. Uh, there was times that where I was telling the church and some of you know some of them already knew, but it was a times where uh, that that's all we had. And what I mean by that is that uh, my husband was a um, an owner, a boss, a CEO, a vision regeneration, and now urban specialist. Uh, but in the tween time, that was that was our foundation. That was what we had, and we gave it all literally. Some of our things at home was the. Uh, was not taken care of. We sacrificed a lot to make sure that we could bring forth and birth the ministry. And so I didn't want that part to die. I didn't, I felt like that was very much a part of us. Uh, not just so much as him, but us, both of us. Mm. And, um, and so I prayed, God gave me the instructions and here am I. All right. Here am I. I don't here know it all. Lord, send me. Yeah, Maybe here am I. Say, yeah, I don't I don't I'm have going. all the answers. I am not Bishop Omar Maligua Jawa by no means. You don't pose to be. I am uh, Pastor Anita Jawa That's and right. uh, God is giving me the instructions for such a time as this. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. I mean, you know, he can use you. He used a mule in the Old Testament. He can okay. use you. Okay. He can use you. He said if you don't uh if you stop them from crying out, the rocks the cry rocks out, are crying out. He can use yeah. you. That's true. The name, his name, Jawa. It, it, it is Jawa. Come, it is not only just that. The middle name as well. It it seems almost like an African name. Is that where they got that name from? Not they. He 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 got that name. When I say when I said yes. they, I meant his his lineage from yes. his father and his grandfather. And no 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 no. He changed his he name. He changed his I name. Oh. I, I checked you out. <laughs> oh yeah yeah yeah. I got yeah, you. Yeah he changed that name when he was nineteen after the birth of the first son and the first son's uh, mother. Mm. So our son is actually Omar Maligua Jawa the second first, and then my husband changed his name. Because it was legal in courts, so the court, he had to go through the court, but during the birth of his son, you know, you can just change it at the hospital. Really? Yeah, you can just change it at the hospital. I didn't know that. So the son is actually the first one, then my husband. Wow. <laughs> so it's oh. the opposite. 
So it's the opposite. Wild. So he wanted to change his name. He wanted to change his name. He wanted a name that was meaning. He wanted a name that was fulfilling. But he wanted a name also that meant purpose. Okay. And so he changed it, and um, and the rest is history. It wasn't easy because his birth name is Omar Taiwan Jefferson. So his father name is Larry Jefferson. Mother name is Rosetta Jefferson. Siblings, all of their last name is Jefferson. But he's a Jawa. So wow. it's like we are Jeffersons, but we're also Jawas. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, I like it. So, so I can dig it. Yeah, <laughs> you can dig it. <laughs> I'm picking up what you're putting down. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> No, I always get you, but I, I definitely, yeah. I, I, I get it, man. You know, you special, you know, you, you, you pastor now. So you're reading a lot. You're, 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 you're praying a lot more, reading yes. a lot more. Yes. Um, did you and him ever discuss this happening as far as you being a pastor or were you a pastor when he was alive? We or? did discuss it. Okay. And uh, he did appoint me as the pastor, okay. uh, but it wasn't official because we were waiting on the date and then okay. waiting on the date to have the official ceremony. Of course, COVID came in mm -hmm. and we were not able to, uh, but we did discuss it. And uh, his idea, our idea was for him to travel to do Hill America and then to go around the country planting churches. Okay. So that he would come back to the home church on the first uh, Sunday of every month. Okay. And then the rest of the Sundays, I will be uh, pastoring and teaching. Wow. Wow. So, um, you guys, how, how did you guys, I know you were going through before, before he had gotten sick, COVID was going on right. before he had gotten sick. It, correct. So correct. when you guys had to pretty much go virtual or, or talk to people yes. without being around them, um, how was that for the church? Cause that church has been through a lot. Yes. Up until this point. Mm -hmm. Yes. Those yes. people, you know, because I, I don't do the yeah. church thing without saying the people. The people. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, because I know that the word ecclesia, it means to be called out from among them. Right. So those people that you guys are dealing with mm -hmm. in that auditorium, yeah. they're, they're, they've been through a lot. A lot. You a know, lot. because they had, to, they had to go through COVID. Then they had to go through the situation with uh, Bishop Omar. And then they had to go through the transition of his transition, then you transitioning in his pastor. Yes. So that's a lot. That, that's a whole lot. A lot to unpack. But that's God. But God. See, you got to say, but God. But God. But See, God. He, he's the one that can make it all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he was the one at the beginning, and he's the Alpha and Omega. So yeah. you're good. Yeah. But that faith word that you keep using. Yeah. You say, but my faith got me through. I love it when she say that, because I know <laughs> she's connected. And that's the part that's going to get us all through. Right. You know, mm -hmm. Right. Is the faith. And being you know, connected. Yeah, 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 yeah. Having that faith in God yeah. is what keeps us going. I, I definitely am enjoying this conversation. That's why I knew I, I wasn't for the play with you because I know you'll get on here and go to, you know, this will be all about God and nothing else. No balance. Just God and no podcast. No Paul's Talk 101. Just God. And we got to balance this thing out. You know what I'm saying? God put this platform here. You know? So we got to make but sure. God. There you go. You know, so. I mean, you know, we definitely enjoy these conversations. We've had yes, we three. Almost maybe, this will every, come out on a Sunday. I always do these on a Sunday. Oh, okay, good. When it's when it's you know that way that way uh, people that that they they watching the show they waiting on uh half pint films or something. Yeah, we don't <laughs> drop this here on them. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, <laughs> they wait no they wait no. Because almost running, every so. almost every episode that we have, we always interject God somewhere oh, yeah. in it. We oh, always you got talk to. about him. It's always. life. It's life. Mm -hmm. It's, it's life, life and God is the reason for the season, you know? Right. And, and, and because you have a relationship with him, it's not personal. just a religion. It's personal. Exactly. And yeah. it's very personal. And very. we think our platform or we know our platform is here to help the people who are listening because there's so many people out there who are glued to their phones or TV watching YouTube and looking for answers or somebody could tell their testimony and that person is going through the same exact thing and was about to whether commit suicide or do something crazy but because of what this person said it helped right. them to move on through right. yeah their i've situation. gotten those calls you know where a person say yeah that that touched me before this platform just me cutting up you know what i'm saying but right. the thing i can say is it's, it's it's a beautiful thing when you when you say you're giving your story and there's somebody else out there it's it's couples out there who lost their life before they even got to five years in college. That's true. 
That's true. All type of stuff. That's true. Pastors out there who 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 things you remember that the one that got killed in the church mm-hmm. and the boy came mm-hmm. in there. Mm-hmm. Look at you know, there's just things life is something else, man. Right. You know, and it was right. It was strange. Well, I say it's strange, but I know it was nobody but God. Like right before all of this went down, my friend asked me to be a part of the the 10 praying women. I believe I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head, but Bishop Jakes had, had a book come out in October. OK. And uh, one of the women that she gave me was Anna. OK. And so when she mm-hmm. called, I called her back. I said, why are you giving me prophets as Anna? Anna's a widow. Mm-hmm. I'm very much married. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. I said, I don't think I need to talk on Anna. Is there anybody else? Mm-hmm. She said, I prayed about it. And when she said I prayed about it, I said, OK, I'm going to study it and I'm going to see. I said, now you do realize there's only two verses about Anna that's in the right. Bible. That's so right? true. So, and she was a widow. Yeah. So yeah. Th- that's really not my story. She waited you know? on Jesus, didn't she? Yeah, she mm-hmm. was waiting. And so I spoke on it in October. A few weeks ago, I spoke on it from experience. Wow. And it was totally different. Mm. And I could feel my help coming on. Like, Already? You know, I could feel it. Uh, because it was from the place to where she had only been married for seven years. Mm, mm. And now she's a widow for the rest of her life. Yeah. And uh, and she kept waiting. Like you said, she was waiting on the promise. Mm-hmm. But she knew exactly when Jesus showed up out mm. of all of the That's babies, right. out of all the boys that came to the temple. Mm-hmm. She knew exactly why. Because she stayed with God. Amen. And she stayed in a relationship not just a religion, not just, she didn't just show up at the temple mm-hmm. and, and gossip and talk and woe is me and I'm a widow and I'm strange. And cause back then being a widow was not the talk of the town mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. they felt like you was an outcast. People had to take care of you cause you didn't have anyone and she didn't have any children. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we don't know if she had a desire to have children, mm-hmm. but just imagine if she did have the desire and every day you had to be reminded that your husband was gone, mm-hmm. but also that you was a motherless mother. Mm. Mm, yeah. But yeah. you still remain with God. Yeah. And yeah. so with all of that, God was just, he was showing me again, I got you. I got you. I had you back then and I got you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a place for a woman that goes through, you know, husbands, uh, the book of Ruth, um, mm-hmm. all of these different That's what books. I was yeah, about. yeah. I thought about it when she was talking to me too. too. Um, it's just God is, God is extraordinary. And, and like I said, you know, you know, you don't. You, we don't know what it, what what the next movie is. He does. He does. You know what I'm saying. So all we got to do is just what pray and wait and fast, like you talked about earlier. I, I yeah. was very intrigued by the fact that you said you was fasting when you when he came <laughs> over. That tell me you was doing things then to get uh, you know out of flesh and get the spirit closer connected to God. You now know? I wasn't perfect, but I was trying. No, no, no. You we know you were. Yeah. Baby, you was at the juke joint two days before that. So we know, you ain't got nobody, to tell us that. But nobody's perfect, even up till now. Nobody's you know what, listen, perfect. man, ain't nobody yes, perfect. And no that's something way. I try to definitely let people know, and they can right. talk to God. You know what I mean? That's the, you know, because sometimes we yeah. put people, so we so far up here yeah. that we forget where we came from. They don't tell those stories about being over there at the juke joint and that's over true. in commerce, letting people in the dorm. I mean, yeah. I mean you didn't say that, but... <laughs> You know, I'm just saying. <laughs> look at it. Look at it. <laughs> but, but I'm just saying, you know, they don't right. think about those parts and they hide them from their children and everybody else. And, and no. they don't give them, you know, they don't give them those those testimonies that could help them. Right. And therefore, they don't even talk to them. The communication dies because they're not being real with them. And the kids can sense the children or the young people. They know when you're trying to play them. They're not going to talk to you because they know you're playing. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. And so they're not staying at all. So what what do you think is the, the thing that if you could talk to a, a woman that had it's it's real early, but still if you had if you had a chance to talk to a lady that do they have a little committee or somewhere the women that lost their husbands are talking or they do have them. You never dealt with it though. No, I never dealt okay, with it. Okay, but what would you tell a woman that had had to go through the same thing that you went through? What I would tell her now yes. that I'm able to talk, because yes. to be honest, if this had been a week, two, three months ago, yeah. I wouldn't be able to talk. Yeah, but I make it easy. Uh, Don't play. Let's go. <laughs> uh, you should have just came, seen me. We'd have had a good time. I'd have made you forget everything. You'd be like, yeah, you probably would have. Yeah, because that's what God do for me. He helped me to yeah. just make people smile. I know my gift. Yeah. What's yours again? I'm making people feel comfortable. Yeah, you I sure do. It. You make me feel comfortable. I don't know about everybody else. <laughs> I'm not with you today. <laughs> but what would you tell her, though? I would tell her to, again, her faith. Yeah. I would tell her to be open, mm-hmm. honest, and transparent. Uh, when it comes those times, when it comes up on you to grieve, Yeah. 
to allow the tears to flow. Do not hold back. Do not try to be stronger than what you really are. Yeah. And and you're going to have those good days. Mm. You're going to have those times where you are, everything is going to remind you of that husband. The smell, the touch, the taste. Uh, when you turn on a bathroom light. Wow. You know, when you go and, and, and you sit in your car because you know, hey, I'm going to get that phone call from my boo yeah, yeah. in 10 minutes. You know, all of these things, you know, driving by the gas station. I used to not have to pump my gas. My husband made me at the gas. Yeah. So all of these triggers will come in, but you have to say, okay, well, God, I thank you for those memories. Yeah. You know. That's and, good. That's good. And I will, it was the um, Father's Day. This year was the first Father's Day. So we went to, I took the girls to Hawaii. So we're in, all the way in Hawaii on Father's Day. I got up. It's five hours different. So I got up and I watched our service. As soon as the service was over, I started crying. I was crying the night before because I knew Father's Day was coming. And I kept trying not to cry. But um, after the service, I started crying. And I cried myself so to maybe 12 to 14 hours later, I was still laying in that bed. And I had to stop because I felt the depression coming on. And I literally had to force myself. I felt like a force was on my chest, like pressing me back, making me stay in the bed. But I got up one foot at a time and I got dressed and I made my way out of that room and walked down and was with my girls and everyone else. But, um, but we can be, I said all that to say this, is that we can grieve ourselves. And we can't get into place to where depression does set in. Mm. And then it's like, woe is me. And you're mad at the world. Mm. Because when it first happened, I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm going to be very transparent. I was mad. I bet. And when I seen couples, oh my God, I couldn't stand couples. He was like, this is. And then the worst couple. That should have been us. Yeah. I'm like, and then I would see guys mistreating their girls. And I'm like, my husband didn't do that. I mean, mm -hmm. he's slamming the door. He cussing her out. Yeah. So, he, oh, so God opened your eyes to these things. Yeah. Or the devil tried to play tricks with your mind with these things. Exactly, exactly. And so it was to the point to where uh, I didn't openly say it, but I didn't want to be around couples. Yeah. And even the church, because I would see different couples in the church, and I would try to take my mind off of it because I'm like, oh, they're couple. They still together. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> We're not together, you know. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, I can't think about that because I got to preach or I got to yeah. pray or, yeah. you know. But it was very, very real, real. And so God had to give me the strength and the grace through all of that. Yeah, yeah. And not that I'm better because, you know, there's a couple of things like even at the, uh, at, at the 4th of July, you know, my brothers, all of them married. Yeah. They yeah. got somebody. I'm like, yeah. I ain't got nobody. Yeah. But it's, it's tough. But God, Shalita. but God, all I can say is, but God. Yeah. That's definitely what it is. But you God. Know, because he, he definitely knows, he knows what's going on. Yeah. You're right. It has already been written. Exactly. He, he knows what's going on. So you, you, um, yeah, yeah. Faith is something else. Faith is very much Because else. you have to just always, no matter what it, in life, I like for me personally, you know, as a child growing up, you go through different things and he's like, God, why? Why me? Why now? Why? You know, that question used to always come up. Right. But for me, the more I stayed in my Bible is I don't ask why anymore. I'm just like, God, I know it's your purpose. I know it's your plan. Whatever it is, just use me. You know, just give me the strength, give me the patience, the things that I need to, to, to be able to perform these tasks. But, and that's, that's my prayers now because I don't ask why anymore because, or I don't um, second guess certain things when it's happening because I know that I may not know the reason why or who it's meant to touch because my life, how I look on life is not for me. It's for somebody else. Right. I'm here to touch somebody else. Right. I'm here whether um, not only to bring my kids to life because I brought them to life and I'm still here. Mm -hmm. I'm here for other purposes, but it's not for me. A lot of people live their life for themselves and not realize it's for other people. You right. know what I mean? So right. I look at all of that when I'm leading my daily life. You're such now, I did question God now. I bet Tita you did. I, did. I mean, who did? I didn't understand it. Cause yeah. I'm like, he was doing so well. He was getting ready to go to Dude, rehab. Let me tell you something. Whenever somebody goes through something, they question God. I don't play. You know, you you yeah. you want to know why? Yeah. I said, God, I you want to really, know why just, this happened to me? Yeah. Everybody do the same thing. They say, No, I don't do. Yes, yeah, you do. At some point, you At say, some What point. is going on? If you didn't do it now, you did it then. Right, and if I, you ain't so done I it yet, then, listen. I don't, and if yeah. you ain't done it, if you ain't done it now, you did it then. And if you ain't done it now, you gonna do it. Right. Yeah. Don't try to play. Yeah. 
Because we go through Cause stuff. I, I you know did, what I mean? I did. I questioned. Every, everybody do. We, oh, we, yeah. we go through stuff. We don't understand. We, we, we act like we got it all together. And we I don't. don't. Well, no, I'm not. You, you convicted? <laughs> no, I'm minute. not. The girl, did you see that? I'm, I did y'all, y'all seen it? No, we did not see it because I'm with you. I did not see it. I'm just talking. You know what I'm saying? But I... <laughs> I did not see no, it. No, 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 no. We just human. Mere humans, yeah, you know. Yeah. And God is, see, Jesus had to come for us. Yeah, while you were yet sinners. See, you yet. ain't done nothing. You think you done done too much. That's why he said like you said it. You know, right. you say by grace through, through faith, not right. by works. Right. Because if you thought you done something, baby, you, you'd be really in, up on it, you know. So we got we to gotta stay humble. Yeah. And me, you know, and what you, you know, what getting back to your experiences, man, and what you're going through, God got a plan. Yeah, somebody you're going to help through this situation. We know that. Yes. Well, I already know how that works because mm-hmm. yes. everything you go through is so that you can help, help somebody. somebody. Else. You don't know what's about to go on in your life. In, in the church that you're in, the people that you're dealing with in your life, you don't know your mm-hmm. kids' life. So, hey, man, get ready for the ride. It's just now beginning. This is just yes. a chapter. I'm telling you. Yeah. And that's where that's what you have to be. You have to be. You have to be. Man, you're just a servant, man. You're just a vessel. He's not looking for your your ability. He's looking for your availability. We know that's that. That's it. That's it. So you're yeah. just making yourself available. Did man. you ever do counseling for after um, yes. his passing? Yes, I did. Okay. I, had, I had two counselors. I still yeah, have two I counselors. Think she said it earlier. Too. Yeah, I went to. Yeah, I, had, I had a counseling session today at one. I was there. Wow. Okay. Yes. Yes. And you have a helps. counseling session now. Yeah. Well, I'm talking to <laughs> Stephanie. I'm interacting with E, so I don't know. If I'm <laughs> no, anytime you talk and you know, yeah, and you let it, and yes. you, it, it helps, helps, man. Yeah. Because yeah. when people are hurt, they do exactly what you said earlier. They they close up. They close up, and they yeah. don't talk about it. And they get angry. And they get angry. You you talked about all of that, yeah. and that, and somebody, like I said, other people could attest to that. Other people looking at this thing when they look at it and say, "Yeah, that yeah. was me." Or, "Man, I'm glad I got to hear that because now I understand why I felt that way." That's what this platform is about. Boss Talk One Hundred One is. is for bosses, people who talk about things that can help other people, mm-hmm. leadership. You That's know what true. I mean? That's true. So I, I just I thank God for you coming on the show. Thank God she for you having get it. me. She about to get it. She what? about to get it. We love you. We're <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> trying to keep you out of the first. Hold on, hold on. I want you to tell. If people want to get a hold of you, please tell us where your church. Um, uh, just you, you know, how could how could people when they if they hurt and they need to need a uh, somebody to talk to about going through what you went through? Yeah. Amen. I am located on Facebook and Instagram. I am Lady Anita. On Facebook, on Instagram, Anita uh, Robertson Jawa on Facebook. Okay. And you can always meet us at K-War Church okay. at 1401 Botham Jean. I'm there every Sunday at 10 a.m. Wow. So come out and be a part of the ministry. I am there. Uh, what I did not, I want to share with this real okay. quick. What Go I ahead. didn't share with you before was that in less than a year, uh, the three people that I depended on most transitioned. Wow. My mom, June 6, 2020, wow. my husband, March 11th, 2021, and my sister, May 27th, two days before my birthday of 2021. Mm. So these three people were my top three contacts. These three people were the ones that I was able to depend on and lean in the most. Again, God came to me right before my sister transitioned and asked me, did I know what the world, uh, a word dependable mean? And, um, and I told God, yes, I know I'm depending on you. And he said, are you really dependent on me? And, um, and he said, dependency and prayer will take you further uh, uh, into my throne, into my very presence, if you are that type of dependable on me or you relying on something else. And I'm telling, we having a conversation. I'm like, God, yeah, I depend on you. Didn't know less than 24 hours that my sister was going to transition. Wow. And so, and not just so transition. Was sudden? Was it yes, sudden? it was sudden. Matter of fact, I was just about to say it. We're, I'm in her hospital room. We're having a conversation like we're having right now. She's telling me, girl, my bottom hurt. So we start, I started making jokes about bottom. So we're laughing and um, they're in there giving her blood and we're talking. And uh, she said, and I could kind of tell that she was nervous. So I grabbed her hand. I said, do you want me to hold your hand? She said, yeah, if you want to. And I can kind of tell that she wanted me to hold her hand. So I'm holding her hand and we're talking. And um, I'm making her laugh. And I look down at the floor for maybe 10 seconds. My head come back up. She slipped into glory. Wow. Mm. Wow. 
And so um, God said, and I was like, God, again, I'm not like everybody else. I went to God again. I said, God, I don't understand. How is this girl going to be removed from my life? She's all I know. I'm six years younger than her. We grew up together, everything. She was in my way and I was in her way. And she got, she had two kids, I had two kids. She went to church, I went to church. Matter of fact, I started at her church. Wow. You know, so our lives were very similar. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I said, now that my mom, then my husband, and after my husband had transitioned, she said, Lord um, told me to walk with you. And I said, okay, and I told, and right before that, before she passed, it was like 72 days. And I said, oh, God, it's been 72 days. And that's how I remember it. And then I said, God, it's only been 72 days. So you had her walk with me for 72 days. What is, what is that about? Wow. Like, I'm thinking you're going to have her walk five, 10 years, maybe. Uh, she had been sick, but not death sick. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so I didn't understand. And today, of all days, as I'm getting prepared to come to here, come here, God said, I didn't have her walk f- with you for her. I had her walk with you for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and I said, God, and he said, yes, that's the reason why her daughter was there. Her son had just left, but I was the one that was holding her hand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it wasn't so much, not, not, not that she was a bad mother or anything like that, but you needed that. Mm-hmm. More than anybody. How was More than kids? anybody. Kids are girls. Yes. Her kids are 27 and 25. Yeah. 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 How are your kids handling, um, the death of your husband, of their father? Uh, they're in counseling. Uh, um, they are, it's one day at a time. Uh, I recognize when they're having a bad day. Um, I give them passes, uh, not to where they're just all out, but I do give the, I do give them passes. The older two are grown, so they're out on their own, but the younger two, I give them passes. How old um, are they? The oldest, the oldest is 28. Our son is 28. Our daughter is 27. And then we got a 19 and a 16 year old. Okay. Hey, y'all got us. It was kind of the same thing when mm-hmm. I was 28, 27, and, thir- and 15 and 13. 15 and 13. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, but hey, man, big ups to you. You're, you're a strong sister. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For you to be able to even do this interview mm-hmm. and, and, and just the glory that we see on you. Wow. The joy, you know what I mean? Um, and them been through it. What the joy of the Lord is what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that strength? Okay. Man, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> Listen, I'm telling you, man. You you look like you know, look like God is is definitely with you, you know. And I think that's going to be good for the people that you talk with and share with. I, I really do. You can tell it's God. Now mm-hmm. I know it's your, you know, you you going through your ministry and everything else. But have you had a vacation or are you, you going to take one? I did. I went to Hawaii. Hawaii. Okay. Um, but I'm going to start taking uh, time off every, every quarter. Yeah. A weekend yeah, or so every that. quarter. I, yeah. I, I really think that's important. Yeah. Because I got to have some time to build back up. That's right. I should operate out of my uh, overflow, yeah. not out of my currency. Yeah, correct. Especially because everything that you do, it's everything surrounding him. You know what I mean? So you really have no time to rejuvenate you. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, you got to make sure you look out for you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, if you need us, we right here. Thank y'all. Been here 15 years, you know, 60 going on. We, we've been here 15, going on 15. Mm-hmm. Going yeah. on 16. Yeah, yeah, we here. Y'all are here. The Lord say we was here. We've been here. And y'all so, are where? Where 11401 here? Elam Road. But what I need you to okay. know is if somebody needs something or, you know, some shoes, yeah. clothes or anything like that, I'm, I am one that do. You know, I help people. That's what that's what we do, right? Yes. Anytime you want, you know, somebody needs something, let us know and we can help out. That's what we like. Okay. You know, because, hey, you know, people go through things, you know, and that's sometimes true. people don't. Need, we have sometimes the kids from TYC come in when they get out and, you know, we try to help them, man. Shout out to Charleston White, right? Like he brings them through. Oh, yeah. So all I'm saying is, man, um, yeah, yeah, we, we didn't just meet for no reason, right? No, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so so there's always a reason. So we just got to make sure we utilize resources. Amen. Yeah, just let me know. I mean, y'all want to pray? Anything you want to pray? Y'all want to pray? Go ahead. I'll pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this moment. Even thank you for this opportunity, Lord. Lord, we ask and we lift up these great uh, business leaders, Father God. We pray for E and Stephanie, Lord. We pray for the vision 
that you've already blessed them and given them, God. Lord, we pray for the overflow, the abundance, for the latter day rain, Father God, for the refreshing and the renewing in this place upon their lives, upon their children's lives. Lord, we just ask that you bless this podcast, allow it to reach and to go further than they could ever imagine, Lord. Allow this to trigger someone's heart, Father God. Allow it to penetrate someone's thoughts, Lord. Allow it to be mind-blowing, life-changing, Oh, God, allow it to be the fresh wind of, of them on this trip, in this journey, Lord. Allow them to know, oh, God, if we can make it, as Bishop Omar would say, if we can make it, they too can make it, Lord. You have no respect of persons. You will reign on the just as well as the unjust, Father. We thank you and we praise you right now for what has happened, what will happen, oh, God, and what has already happened, Lord. We thank you right now, oh, God, for the ministries that are being birthed, even through this podcast podcast, God. We thank you for every individual, every business that is connected, Lord. Thank you for indirect and direct, Lord. Thank you for the flow, even the abundance. You said there was no lack in your kingdom, God, and we stand on your word. There's no lack, oh God, in this business, in this area, Father God, that we are producers after our own kind, oh God, and we thank you right now that it is so, oh God, that it is so. In the mighty name of Jesus, we dare Jesus. to believe Amen and amen. 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 Hey, man, you know, hey, yeah, yeah, that's it there. Now I can get on. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That was it right there. God heard him. And he, and I was, hey, I was right there with you, man. Thank you so much, man. Amen. We love you. You are welcome. I oh, love you. We love you. Oh, we, yes. okay. There you go. We love you. And, and, and I we, love y'all. If you need us, we're here. Um, we definitely don't be shy about contacting us. If you ever want to pray, you want to talk to somebody who, really, really uh, cares about the things that's going on with individuals because God give us, that's our gift to care, you know. So we thank you. You're welcome. Thank y'all yeah, for having man. me again. Come on, man. You know, I you will can be come black back tomorrow. Back. <laughs> you be black. Yes, you. you can come back tomorrow. We'll shut, hey, we'll, we'll shut the door down. And shut it down. Yeah, we'll, we'll get right back on these okay. in the car. Yeah, as long as you need us, I'm here. <laughs> oh, Lord. Say, man, it's been no, another, it's another great, uh, great segment of Boss Talk 101, man. And we out.